Welcome back to Crypto Future, guys. Good afternoon. Just got home from the gym. Got in a good workout. Uh, figured I'd come on here, do an afternoon, early evening video with you guys. Uh, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Make sure you guys are doing your own research. Um, so the first thing I, I turns out had to had to ban my first uh, my first person from uh, being able to comment on uh on the videos on youtube because uh, i don't like having to do that because <clears throat> um i'm generally you know if, if you have a different opinion of something than me then um i encourage you to put it down in the comments and we can talk about it you might change my mind i'm a very open-minded person i don't i don't close my mind to things i don't just think that i'm right and that's it if you you might have a compelling argument or or side or perspective that might you know change my mind on something who knows right so I'm always welcoming that um, and I'll never I'll never censor anybody for that I, I in fact I appreciate it right I'm here learning from you guys just as much as you're learning from me uh, I don't see it as I'm just you know I'm I know everything because I don't right so this person that I that I uh, banned from the channel there um, I gave him three strikes the first First time he came on was a few weeks ago, and he started fighting uh, Jasmine in the comments. But I ignored him. And then, about a week, week and a half later, he started fighting XRP. And again, I ignored him. And then today, or was it today? I think it was today. I did a video, I did a short, and it was uh, referencing, um, I can't remember whom, but I mentioned it in the short, uh, they had predicted a $250,000 Bitcoin by the end of the year. Now, if you go back and watch that short, you'll see that in the short, I say that in my opinion, I completely disagree with that. I do not think that, that Bitcoin is going to reach a new all-time high until well after the halving. I think we still have probably six, six months after the halving maybe before we see any kind of new all-time high for Bitcoin. That, that That's what I said in the short, in the video, and blah, blah, blah. This person didn't even, clearly didn't even watch the video, just started making comments saying that, uh, saying that I didn't know what I was talking about or something like that, that Bitcoin's not gonna reach $250,000 before the end of the year. And I was like, that's what I said. If you had watched the video, you would know that, right? Um, so he's basically one of those people who just comments on thumbnails and uh, looks like a complete fool afterwards. So don't be that guy, right? Um, so that was strike three. Um, for me, when you're coming on and you're making comments on videos that you're not even watching and then what you say ends up not making sense. And what I would say to somebody like that is that, or to people who see pe others like that, is that, listen, this person was too lazy to even watch a short like a 30 second video before commenting. So I wouldn't really trust that they're not too lazy to do proper technical analysis when it comes to uh, price predictions and stuff like that either, right? If you can't watch a 30 second short, you, I certainly can't trust you to do proper TA, in my opinion. Um, that's just lazy. So that's my thoughts on that, guys. Um, so yeah, but I do encourage you guys, if you disagree with something I say, put it in the comments down below. You know, obviously don't be rude about it, but I mean, because I'm open to, to to conversation, right? I don't argue with people. If you have a different opinion, I respect that. It's all good, right? I mean, you might convince me, like I said. Anyways, sorry to bore you guys with that, but I, I thought I'd be, you know, transparent with you guys. Let's get into some of the news here. Uh, talking about uh, the article about uh, Gary Gensler that I touched on this morning. Uh, resigning and as I said in the video this morning it's not true guys it's made up okay the article was written by the same guy who said uh, like a week and a half ago two weeks ago that uh, that ripple was buying back 10 billion XRP right it's just it's, he's just making up articles and um, I'm putting them out there now now here's the caveat on that okay I believe, and I've been saying it for weeks, and you guys, if you're watching the videos, you, you you will have heard me say this before. I do believe that Gary will resign. 
at some point when the pressure becomes too much because he did resign from the CFTC for similar reasons because investigations were launched, launched against him and he ended up resigning and walking away. He will do the same thing here because Gary does have political aspirations and he's not going to want this tainting his record by getting uh, fired from the SEC. He will walk away first, right? Um, but not now and this article is not accurate. Right, what the art, art, the the spirit of the article will come to fruition, but this guy just made this up right now, so that's my take on it. That's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down below. Um, here, Tim Draper, that's what it was. That's his name, the guy who predicted the two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar Bitcoin uh, in twenty twenty three. Then it's not going to happen. Um, and just a reminder for you Litecoin holders, personally I don't hold any Litecoin, um, but Litecoin halving is coming up. Um, you guys will probably see more pump in that coin, in my opinion, not financial advice, but um, you know you know what the halving does, right? And it's coming, guys. So uh, we've got, so I saw somebody had posted, uh, it was an article and they were, uh, or something like that, and they were talking about and I touched on it last week. Uh, they said that, uh, like the American government, or maybe it was the U UE or something like that, was going to use. Uh, ch they chose to use Bitcoin for uh, cross-border uh, transfers, financial transfers, and stuff like that. And it was just like, and I had said, like, why would they choose something that expensive and that slow? Because that doesn't make any sense. When there's cheap options out there, they're, they're going to use something that's going to take longer and you might as well just stay with swift if you're gonna do that right now don't get me wrong i like bitcoin i hold bitcoin i believe in bitcoin right that being said it's it's not for cross-border transactions and so anyway here 755 million dollars in four seconds was transferred um while the cryptocurrency community may have its doubts over ripples xrp uh, cryptocurrency Banks seem to be enjoying its perks. A reported $755 million worth of XRP was transferred in four seconds and only cost one cent. Now you think that world governments are going to use Bitcoin that's going to cost them an arm and a leg and take far longer to transfer the money when you can have instant settlements with the XRP and it only cost one cent to move $755 million? They're going to use XRP. Come on. Come on. Sorry, Bitcoin Maxis. Okay, so we got some other big news here. It's an article. Uh, take it for what, what it is. Like I said, it's an article. I didn't write it. Um, from you today, XRP Base Hedge Fund filed with S SEC raises new expectations. What do we got? So let's read it here. Patrick L. Riley, CEO of Reaper Financial. If you remember Reaper, Reaper Financial, uh, they had filed an amicus brief uh, in the Ripple XRP case uh, near the end of last year, early this year. Um, and uh, they, so it says, uh, CEO of, of Reaper Financial has hinted uh, at an exciting development for Ripple. He stated on Twitter that Arlington Capital, a digital asset management firm in blockchain based capital markets, Founded in 2017, has recently filed with the SEC for an XRP-based hedge fund. Uh, Riley added uh, a piece of good news. There is an expectation for all to go well. Arlington recently filed with the SEC for an XRP-based hedge fund. Uh, seems there is an expectation for all to go well. Uh, I already said that. Arlington's website mentions Arlington XRP Capital. Uh, which is a multi multi strategy hedge fund uh, investing in early stage ventures uh, and public markets. Hedge fund hedge funds pool investors money and invest. Uh, we know what hedge fund hedge funds are. Uh, according to an SEC in, in investor guide, hedge funds are exempt from some of the regulations uh, intended to protect investors. Some hedge fund. Managers may not be required to register or file public reports with the SEC depending on the number of assets in the hedge fund advised by the manager. Hedge funds, however, are subject to the same anti-fraud regulations as other market players. 
uh, and their managers have a fiduciary duty to the funds that they manage. Um, so, so that's some uh, that's some bullish news for XRP. Um, cross your fingers on that one, guys. I'll keep you guys posted and updated on that. Uh, that is from uh, you today. Uh, I shared the article on my Twitter page. If you want to go read it yourself, it's uh, at Rob Mass. And so at R O B B M A S S. Uh, if you want to read the article yourself, I've shared it there. Um, and we got uh, Justin from Whale Charts, Cardano founder Charles Hos Hoskinson uh, criticized Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin for staking only a small portion of his Ethereum holdings, claiming that this show of lack of trust in his own protocol. That's exactly it, guys. Like that is kind of embarrassing that uh, <laughs> that they're doing that. That they're, they're like the people on the inside, the developers of, of Ethereum and stuff. They're not even staking their Ethereum because they say it's not safe. They don't trust it, but they expect everybody else to. That's insane. I'm not. I don't have mine. I, I move all my crypto to cold storage. I don't. I don't play with that stuff, guys. I encourage you guys. To do the same, I encourage you guys to use uh, cold storage wallets, uh, not your not your keys, not your crypto. Remember that, guys. Um, so yeah, that's that's my thoughts on that. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, and then I kind of want I did a short on this a few days ago, and I kind of wanted to reiterate it in a video. Uh, and we're talking they're talking about uh, you know Jay Clayton's comments about uh, Gary Gensler saying that. If we don't lose cases, then we're not suing enough companies. We're not doing enough. That's what that means, right? Now, there's a lot of controversy about this. Now, I see through the old crap cake here. I see exactly what Gary's doing, right? Gary's saying this now because he knows he's about to lose this Ripple case. And how do you soften that blow? He's making up an excuse before he takes his first big loss to try to do damage control on the loss of that case to Ripple. That's why he's saying this now. Well, we got to take some losses or else we're not doing our job, right? So he's going to lose. He's going to be drugged back in front of Congress and they're going to throw it in his face and talk to him about it. And he's just going to keep reiterating that talking point. Well, I mean, if we don't if we don't lose cases, then are we suing enough people? Are we doing enough? Like that's the narrative he's putting out there. He's preempt preemptively laying the groundwork, in my opinion, to soften the blow for this loss. He's about to get his he's about to get the floor mopped with him, and uh, yeah, he's he's desperately trying to change the narrative right now. That's that's what I see happening here. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Am I am I right on this? Did I hit the nail on the head or am I just way off base? Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about that narrative. I'd love to know. Um, <clears throat> and then I saw this other comment the other day too on, on one of the videos, uh, a friend of mine on his channel. And it said, uh, the person said Cardano had no utility. They said Solana's uh, pumping and, and Cardano's not because uh, Solana has utility and Cardano doesn't have any any use case, any utility or anything. And again, I keep telling you guys, when someone says something about, you know, Cardano or Jasmine or whatever it is, and they're saying, well, I had, you know, it's just a shit coin and, you know, it has no utility and it's a rug and all that stuff. Listen, Cardano has uh, so far launched 131 projects and, and 1,261 projects are currently being built on its network. In addition, it recently, it recently marked a $70 million transaction milestone. So, and then someone's going to say with a straight look on their, with a, you know, with a serious look on their face that there's no utility to Cardano. You're talking to imbeciles. So that's why you don't feed the trolls, right guys? You don't even bother responding. That's, every once in a while you'll see some dumb comment on one of my videos. And you guys know, I reply to all of you guys. I read all of your comments and I, I conversate with you guys because I enjoy it, right? We have some laughs and stuff like that. I was joking with uh, one of you guys today about, uh, uh, about Gary you know, working at McDonald's. It was a good time. Um, we had some good laughs there. And, the, you know, w whenever someone makes a dumbass comment, like, like, well, Jasmine or Cardano has no utility. I don't even, I don't feed the trolls. I don't even reply. I'm not going to argue with some moron who hasn't done any research. 
Why would I argue with somebody about a project when they haven't done any research on the project? They don't know anything about the project. So it's it's pointless to argue with them. They have zero information, right? That's, you know, that's like playing poker with someone or, you know, argue, in an argument with somebody about poker and they don't know the rules of poker, but they're arguing with you about the rules of poker. They're, in, they're an imbecile. Don't feed the trolls, you guys, right? So anyways, that's my, uh, <laughs> that's my ranting for this evening. Uh, I'm going to go watch the new Super Mario Brothers movie with my son there. He's pretty amped up. He's, he's three. He's pretty amped up about watching that, so... I'm going to go spend my uh, my Sunday watching that with him before he goes to bed. So, uh, yeah. So, shoot me a like, you guys. Push the content out there. Uh, shoot, me a, shoot me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, also, I had put a poll out today asking you guys what your thoughts are on CASPA. So, check out that poll. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Um, and also, yeah, subscribe. Let's get to 300, guys. Shoot me that sub. Let's keep growing. We're doing fantastic. I love it. Uh, every time I, I log on and I check it out, I've got more subs, and I love it, you guys. We're growing like crazy, uh, and I, I genuinely appreciate all of you guys. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate the conversations that we have, um, and I appreciate all your likes. You guys are doing really good with the likes. Like That's crazy, uh, and, I, and I appreciate it a lot. I really do. Um, so... Because, like, whenever I go on to Twitter and I'm watching some of my favorite, uh, you know, uh, influencers and stuff like that, before the video even starts playing, the first thing I do is hit the like button. Even if I don't like what they're saying. Because, like, it's not costing me anything and it helps them, right? So, I'm just being a nice guy, right? So, anyways, I appreciate you guys because you guys are being nice guys and gals and, and everything in between. And I love all of you. So, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.